Let us take a moment to assume that we all once had beliefs that were proven wrong due to evidence that proved they were. Sometimes our thoughts and opinions get corrupted, and it takes an extremely long time for some people to acknowledge that some of their beliefs or ways of thinking weren't carefully thought out or lacked objective reasoning. Now, here is a brief discussion of how cognitive dissidents can deteriorate a democracy. Welcome to 4C's One Family. We must acknowledge that some social political ideologies are diametrically opposed. So what we call beliefs in our social political structure may not apply to others. Now, I will only make brief comparisons of how cognitive dissonance, if left unchecked, can become a hindrance in democratic nations like the United States and lead to democratic backsliding. Now, if you want to see my references for this episode, please look at the link I supplied below for a more extensive investigation. Cognitive dissonance arises when people encounter two or sometimes more interpretations or philosophies that cause them to become confused or uncomfortable because at their cores, the concepts that hold conflicting beliefs and ideologies together continue to drift further and further apart. For example, people know that eating junk food isn't healthy, but from time to time they eat junk food because it gives them short-term pleasure. One question to spotlight is how people interpret the limits set to ensure that citizens have equal rights when doing what they want or must do. A more extreme example is when a citizen becomes conscripted into a war that may require the taking of a life while simultaneously understanding it's a terrible thing to do. Still, people may have no other choice but to protect themselves, the people they care about, their property, their nation, or adhere to a law that makes it a crime to not participate in combat. With this in mind, citizens must be aware of how political mouthpieces present and use issues strategically designed to persuade while at the same time confusing and frustrating those who have cognitive dissidents. Now, I will not detail how political pundits or charismatic individuals use platforms to embellish narratives that help them build their political and social media. In a democratic nation, every citizen has the right to do and believe what they want as long as it doesn't negatively affect the lives and well-being of other citizens. Now, you may be asking, why is there so much concern about how cognitive dissidents may affect democratic nations? You see, Cognitive dissidence and its negative ramifications handicap a nation's social, political, and technological development. Those serving as public representatives may present and use terms that split public understandings and opinions instead of developing crossroads that help people find common grounds for discourse. According to a Pew Research Center study, People who are dissatisfied with how democracy is functioning are often less committed to representative democracy. And one important driver of dissatisfaction with democracy is frustration with political elites. This research is just one example of how social and political influencers inadvertently create communal cognitive dissidents by promoting opposing viewpoints without presenting possible side effects which causes further confusion and weakens critical thinking. You see, cognitive dissidence is surely partly responsible for the low willingness to overcome social and political obstacles in nations that allow citizens to express themselves openly without fear of government intervention. Clashes between opposing parties have been weakening the core that holds democratic nations together to the point of being counterproductive and even destructive. Cognitive dissonance is much like a pinball game that bounces different interpretations, conclusions, and opposing views off each other. Those who have cognitive dissonance choose to justify their beliefs and use it as a shield to prove that they are good people. And let me be more specific. When you hear MAGA supporters in America saying they want to make America great again, You have to wonder if they have forgotten how their great nation subjugated people of black skin for 400 years or even to the point of death. 
And have they forgotten how these fellow Americans were experimented upon for so-called medical research? Can the American government be held responsible for the exclusion and then genocide of Native Americans? And yes, there's a group with three repeated letters that would prefer to degrade or, in some cases, see the death of people who don't believe or look like them. Have they forgotten how Japanese Americans were once gathered and locked in internment centers, better known as camps? And how can those of us who truly believe that Black lives matter fail to see how our communities are allowing themselves to be destroyed internally by violent actions created within our own communities. And yes, there's something called segregation. Now, we can never bring back the lives of those we lost, and the reasons for the losses of their lives may never be legitimized or reconciled. So what can be done at this point? Do you remember who said we need to learn how to judge people by the contents of their character and not the color of their skin? Must we always stay focused on our goals without understanding how our narrow view weakens us all? Now, some of our beliefs do deserve some merits, but if our beliefs hamper our existence as a whole, we may need to step back to look at the whole picture because we are now interconnected. I guess we all have become victims of selective amnesia. When people who are good people in their hearts finally discover that a way of thinking they have is flawed or frankly unethical, it may become hard or even impossible to justify a misguided belief they once had and even at one time evangelized. It isn't easy to admit that something we once believed to be undeniably true turned out to be absolutely wrong, and even after finding out a belief is biased, continue to rationalize a particular conviction because of a relationship with a charismatic individual or because of a member's group. Blind conformity can become very dangerous when collaborative cognitive dissidence becomes a liability that takes control of people's minds who refuse or, or who are unable to think objectively or let biases go. How can people self-analyze and avoid cognitive dissidence? Number one. Get into the habit of questioning any information that conveniently confirms your current situation or beliefs because it's too comforting to hear what most people around you say and believe. Number two, question why the information you are asked or requested to believe is being presented to you. Could your participation be needed to support another group or someone else's hidden motives? Number three, Check to see if any actions you partake in harm others regardless of their beliefs. Number four, remember those opposing your views may themselves have cognitive dissonance and aren't thinking objectively. Number five, check how you rationalize a belief over another conflicting belief and ask yourself if the viewpoint you have is because of past mistreatment, fear, or moral responsibility. Number six, look for ways to compare how your actions and beliefs can be positively applied to beliefs those who don't believe what you believe and present it to them. People who live in democratic societies must remain aware that their personal beliefs shouldn't be forcefully opposed on others regardless of how essential or truthful. In some situations, an emotional reset may be needed. In nations that allow different opinions to be heard, cognitive dissonance becomes a significant factor that influences political policies and practices. Actual and perceived disparities are usually presented as the cause of political and social unrest. These disparities may exist because of inherent institutionalized or systematic policies and practices that result in inequalities. Most people would say that they are ethical regardless of background, race, and beliefs. 
However, they still find themselves doing things they know aren't moral, which cause some of them to have a mental reshuffling. You see, it takes a lot of self-reflection to rid oneself of a point of view that holds one back from seeing the world as it is instead of how one wants it to be. If you have found what we have to offer of any value, please click on the subscribe and bell buttons below to keep up to date with our current episodes. And if you're listening to our podcast, please subscribe and help us spread the word that we have a lot more in common than we think. We're very interested to hear what you have to say. Before Seas One Family, I'm James Thomas in Taipei, Taiwan. And remember to stay strong, safe, and healthy wherever you are in the world.